Okay, this section talks about simple harmonic motion. So what is that? Simple harmonic motion is basically something that vibrates, that's going back and forth. So uh, one diagram I drew here was a weight on a spring. It kind of bounces up and down, goes back and forth. A pendulum, that would be another thing, it swings back and forth, that has a the same motion over and over again. Sound waves or television waves, radio waves, those are all other things, examples that would have simple harmonic motion. So this, this basically, this section is talking about that type of motion. So in order to describe that, we need to take a look at equations that go along with it. You can have either a cosine equation or a sine equation. So this graph right here, I try to illustrate what the relationship is between something that bounces back and forth and if you have a basic graph. So let's say you have a spring and you're pulling the weight down this way and then you let it go. Well, we're pulling it down, so we're starting the graph out way down here, down below. So basically this right here, the choice of the formula depends on your resting position. If I want the weight to start down here, that actually is starting at an amplitude. So in that case, I probably would want to choose a, a cosine graph uh, that describes this. But if I, if I have something that's here at the resting position, I'm starting the cycle at the resting position, then I would want to use the sine graph because that sine graphs always begin here uh, at the, on the x-axis. So in this case, in my drawing here, I actually have a, this is the t-axis here, so you have d and you have t this way. So as this bounces back and forth, the d represents how far you are away from your original starting position. Your time has to do with, again, uh, at the time it'll tell you where, what position the weight actually is from the resting point. So this is basically how these formulas work. So you have these two formulas, cosine or sine. Now these uh, should look familiar. We've graphed these before in a previous session. So the same formulas that apply when we did the graphing, they also apply here as well. So the A represents the amplitude. That would tell you what the furthest away it comes, it'll stop, go to here or go down to there. This distance right here uh, would be your amplitude as we talked about before in the graphing section. Now your period has to do with this omega here, the number in front of the t, and the formula for it is 2 pi over omega. That should look familiar. That's another formula we looked at before when graphing the sine and cosine graphs. Now a new formula in this section is it may ask you for frequency. The frequency is always the reciprocal of your period, it's one over the period, or again, if you have a formula here, two pi over omega, we can write it as omega over uh, two pi. So these, so it's, it's kind of similar. This is an application uh, of your trig functions. And so now that we've taken a look at all these different definitions, uh, the next couple of videos here, we're going to talk. We'll have a few examples that are dealing with uh, these specific equations.